Okay, now the art part is done. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, today. And uh, thank you to Lorenzo for accepting to give this presentation. And well, a few words uh, about Lorenzo. Lorenzo joined Strumenta a few months ago in March, if I remember correctly. He has he had a long interest in uh, model-driven development and language engineering, but he also has other interests like uh, uh, game programming and deep learning. Among other things, he's also an end ball goalkeeper and likes to watch The Office, but he didn't specify if he watched the American or the English version. So which one? Both of them. Both. Okay, so far I watched just the American one. And uh, okay, and today Lorenzo is going to talk about uh, Starlazu. Starlazu is a set of libraries, of open source libraries we develop at Strumenta, and it's basically the same library replicated in different languages. Uh, so uh, there is one in Kotlin, one in Python, one in TypeScript, and from last week also one in C Sharp. And this is a set of libraries that we use to, to implement pipelines uh, uh, for working with languages. So to build parsers, but also transpilers, also interpreters and all these sort of things. And there are different features, like for example, exporting to different formats, including eCore. And, but also for traversing trees, for transforming trees and all sorts of stuff. And uh, today, uh, Lorenzo will talk about Sarlazo and show some example implemented using the Kotlin language. But again, given basically we have the same library, in different languages, most of the same concepts can be applied also to other languages. So it's time for me to shut up and let uh, Lorenzo take over. Okay, <clears throat> thanks Federico for the introduction. I will share my screen. Um, can you see it properly? Okay. Yes. Okay. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, as Federico mentioned, I'm going to uh, talk about Starlasu on an open source methodology for parsers and transpilers that we have been working on uh, for a couple of months. Um, what is, and we'll start by um, understanding where does uh, Starlazo come from? So uh, during our uh, everyday job, uh, we, we had the uh, privilege to um, uh, um, develop uh, experience in, uh, in implementing editors, transpilers, compilers, interpreters, and other tools like static analysis tools that we can uh, generally call language processing tools. Um, so we, uh, while working on these uh, numerous projects, we started to uh, identify some recurring uh, data structures and uh, algorithms uh, that, that we were using. Um, so we started thinking about a, a methodology supporting the development of these language processing tools as, as configurable pipelines. So as pipelines made of components that can, uh, uh, could be composed uh, to, to create different, uh, different kinds of uh, language processing tools. Um, this, the, the most relevant uh, components that we identified were abstract syntax trees, queries over abstract syntax trees and transformations uh, among these. Uh, in this picture below, you can see um, an example picture of a transpiler uh, where we, we can clearly identify the pipeline as being, uh, first we create an AST from the, um, from the parse tree obtained by parsing the code in the original language. Then we perform some transformations uh, from the original language, the AST of the original language to an intermediate model, and then to a, the AST of a target language, we might need queries to aggregate information and reorganize the information. 
And finally, uh, we generate the code in the, in the target language. So um, we ended up uh, working on this uh, Star Lasso methodology, with, which is a methodology promoting the development, as I said, of language processing tools as configurable pipelines. Um, and we provide different runtime libraries. Essentially, when uh, the, the objective of, of the Star Lasso methodology is to provide some uh, support, some kind of built-in support uh, as, as soon as you start defining ASTs with, uh, with uh, one of the um, uh, libraries of the Star Lasso family. Uh, whenever you, you create, you define an abstract syntax tree using Star Lasso, you, you have support for uh, node to text and node to node traceability support, which means um, things like uh, maintaining information about um, given an AST node, what is the source code, uh, the, the position in the source code corresponding to that node, or during a transformation, um, um, a target node, where, where does it come from? Um, and also we provide a generic API for querying the AST, uh, for navigating the AST, finding specific kind of nodes uh, and specific kind of properties, uh, performing transformations over these uh, ASTs and also uh, issue reporting. Uh, so uh, reporting semantic, uh, syntactic and lexical issues. And finally cross-referencing. So, um, um, given uh, the textual reference, the name-based reference uh, to to something uh, representing the AST, the the actual the actual link between the the reference and the definition of of a given uh, node, um, and also we we provide some sort of platform independent support by um, uh, allowing to serialize and unserialize ASTs. And in this way, it's possible to even uh, uh, compose, um, create pipelines made of components uh, implemented in different languages. And we, um, so for example, we, we can have a parser in uh, developed in Kotlin that then serializes its AST to, to JSON. And then this JSON gets unserialized by a Python, uh, a transpiler written in Python. As mentioned, uh, we currently have uh, four different uh, implementations of uh, Star Lasso. The first, uh, and let's say the the uh, yeah the, the 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 first one that we started working on is Colasso, and it's written in Kotlin, and also support it can also be used by, uh, from Java, and then Pilasso in Python, Tilasso in TypeScript or JavaScript, and and the young. Uh, uh, sharp lasso in uh, C sharp. So today um, we are going to um, go go through and and um, and and see what what can be done and the the usual the usual uh, workflow in uh, using uh, Colasso. So we we are going to um, have a demo where I will show you. Uh, an example of an entity parser where the entity language is a small language that uh, I defined uh, that provides you the possibility to just create modules consisting of entities where each ent entity can have a set of features. So a very small language, uh, we're going to start from an Antler parser. We are going to see how to define a Colasso AST how, can, how we can transform the Antler uh, parse tree that we obtain to, into an AST, into Colasso AST. Um, and then also uh, we're going to see how to represent cross-references inside the AST and implement the symbol resolution step during semantic analysis. And finally, some example of uh, serialization in both uh, JSON and EMF. Uh, furthermore, I'm going to uh, show you an example of a, an entity to Python transpiler. More specifically, we, we are going to use a Python code generator and compose it together with the entity parser and see an example of how easy it is to create a pipeline um, using, uh, reusing existing components. Okay.
Can you see the ID? Yes. So yes. as you can see, uh, we have here an Antler grammar of this very simple language. Uh, we, when the, the root rule is the module, a module has a name and a set of entities. Each entity has a set of features and a feature is just, um, just consists of a name and the type specification, very basic type specification that can be an integer, so a primitive type, integer, boolean, or string, or uh, an entity reference type. So given this, um, this grammar, we can, we, can, uh, we, can, we, can, we can start defining our AST. In Colasso, um, as, uh, whenever we want to define a new kind of node, it's just uh, it is enough to um, define our own class, like the module class in this example, and extend the node um, class of the Colasso of Colasso. In this in this class, we are going to get um, the uh, node to text and node to node tracking support uh, through this position field. As I and I will show you later the different properties that we can also um, inherit. And, and so simply the AST consists of a set of classes where we just um, represent the different, uh, the different fields that we want to keep track in the, in the, in the AST. And um, if in, to represent uh, cross-references, um, if, we, if we look at the grammar, we saw that an entity type is represented by just an ID, so essentially uh, uh, the, the antler parse tree will just return a name-based reference, a text, simple text. Whereas in our ST, we, we want to represent it as a reference by name to something that's, that's, that's an entity. Reference by name is a class, is an, a class that we provide in Colasso, and uh, it allows us to uh, bind a given name to something that's referred. Um, so essentially, in the AST construction, we just first we transform these the the name based references to reference by names, and in the subsequent steps, we can uh, run similar resolution and use and and simply update the reference by names in our AST to to keep track of the the actual object that is referenced. <clears throat> we'll see an example later. So how do we define a, an entity parser? Uh, so a Colasso entity parser. Uh, so as, as soon as we have our uh, AST definition, um, we can define a Colasso parser by uh, extending some, there is a, um, a built-in class of, Col of Colasso. Uh, in this case, we are extending the EMF enabled parser. Uh, so generally the, the class to extend is a Colasso parser. Uh, the EMF enabled parser adds support for um, the serialization of a meta model. So the AST is converted to an eCore meta model and is, and is, ser and is serialized. And uh, it's also possible to serialize models. And I will show you uh, an example later in the, the test that I prepared. Uh, other than this, we just need to implement uh, some uh, basic methods where we just uh, we just have to inform the parser where to put where to take the antler, lexer, and parser. So the underlying the the Colasso parser is essentially wrapping the antler, uh, the generated antler, antler classes, and we can start defining our um, our pipeline. So the, 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 the main step, the fundamental step of a parser is the parse tree to AST, which essentially is the step where we take the antler parse tree and we want to transform it to an AST. And how and, and this in Colasso can be done by using AST transformers, which is a set of uh, classes that we defined supporting um, the implementation of the, the steps in our pipeline. And in the case of parse tree to ASTs, uh, we can use the parse tree to AST transformers. And we can also add multiple uh, steps after the, the, the parse tree to AST conversion by extending, by overriding the post-process AST. And in this case, for example, 
I am going to show you how this can be used to introduce symbol resolution right after ASD construction. So let's see how to how the um, parse three to ASD conversion works. Um, we um, extend the parse tree to AST transformer class, as I said before, and this is a built-in class in Colasso and it essentially requires you to define the, um, for, for each of the, the parse tree nodes that we want to convert to our AST nodes, we just need to define um, the, the rules and the different features we want to map. So, for example, uh, if we, in order to specify that we want to, well, for those that are not familiar with Antler, a module context is uh, it more more or less represents the parse tree node uh, that we uh, that we get from whenever Antler is going to parse a module fi module file. So if we want to map the parse tree node representing a module into an AST node representing the module, we can register what's uh, called a node factory and essentially uh, instruct this node factory in uh, how to uh, create the, the AST node and then inform uh, the same node factory about the child properties that we want to continue on transforming. So in this case, for example, we are saying I want to map a module parse tree node to a module AST node, and I want to um, map the entities property of the grammar, so the this property, to the entities property of the, of the AST node. And uh, in order to, uh, to work, we also have to register a node factory for entities. Uh, so essentially, this is going to fall back to the to using the uh, the node factory that we register for entities, and 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 the same thing goes on for all the other parse three nodes that we want to map um, towards the our AST. As I mentioned before, uh, reference by names are um, are used to represent references. So uh, in the case of entity types, uh, we just map them to entity reference types that we have in our AST. And, and in this case, the target is initially uh, set as a reference by name where we, we do not set the actual object that we're referencing to, but we only have the, the name, which in this case is the text contained in the target field of the grammar. So essentially, this identifier here. <clears throat> so once we have created our, our AST, we're going to have um, the, uh, the, the, our AST without uh, the reference being resolved. So what we want to do, the next step is uh, apply symbol resolution. This can be implemented by uh, defining a, an AST transformer. In this case, Oh, and I forgot to mention that, well, the parse tree to AST transformer is going to handle for you all that concerns uh, keeping track of the position and the origin. And this can be seen in the, um, in the, in this uh, transformation, in this transform uh, method where we are using the node factories. And then we are, for each of the nodes that we are creating in our AST, we are we are actually binding the source, so the parse tree node, to the to the AST node. So the the output of this step will be an AST with references to all the parse tree nodes. So uh, it will be possible to access to the source text and other uh, features. Um, back to similar resolution, we can implement another kind of AST transformation transformer. Uh, in this case, is going to be an in-place transformation. So AST transformers uh, can be used to uh, create model-to-model, node-to-node transformations, um, but also in-place transformations. In this case, we are just um, we are um, we we define the utility method register identity mapping, which is essentially saying that uh, we want to take a node and just uh, keep it in the next step untouched. 
So, um, uh, and then we are navigated into the end. It's, this is a way in the transformer to say, I don't care about modifying this node. I just want to go um, through with children. So we do, the, we do this for almost every node except for entity reference types. In the case of entity reference type, uh, this is where a symbol resolution happens. And this is where we can uh, see an example of the support uh, for navigating the AST that we provide in Colossal. Um, when, we, when we want to resolve a, a reference to an entity, in this example, what we want to do is to first find the, the module we are, we, are, we are in. So we are going to navigate uh, through the ancestors and uh, only consider those ancestors uh, of type module, and we want, we want to, to get the first one. So we are going to find an ancestor, ancestor of type, and this is a method provided by Colasso and we want to get the module. Once we get this ancestor, and in this case, we are kind of sure to find a, a module because it's, uh, is, it's by definition of the language. So once we get the module, we want to search from, this, from the, the, the module node for all the entity nodes that we can find. So essentially we are aggregating all the entities that we have in our model right now. Once we have these entities, uh, we can use the Colasso method try to resolve, which essentially is going to take a list of candidates, uh, so of nodes, and uh, resolve a reference by name by using the one that corresponds to the to the to the name of the reference by name we are using. So. Essentially, we are get, taking the entities and we, we are just trying to resolve, uh, to select the entity that, that uh, has the name that we are looking for. Um, so if we, if, we are, uh, if we are successfully, if we successfully find the entity, uh, we're fine. So we are, we are going to end up with an AST, an updated AST containing the, the references uh, with the object and not, also, not only the name. Otherwise, we can use uh, another kind of support provided by Colasso, and we can just uh, produce an issue. In, a, in an AST transformer, we can produce an issue, and this is going to get uh, to, um, to be part of the final result of the pipeline by uh, defining, by using the uh, built-in class issue. Uh, in this case, what we, are, what we want to do is add an issue that is a semantic issue to communicate that the entity uh, that we are looking for hasn't been found. And we can also annotate the issue with the, with the position uh, that is uh, um, of the node that we're having problems with. So I prepared a uh, couple of tests to illustrate you the different uh, support that we have in uh, in, uh, in Colasso. Um, let's let's consider this module. I will split the editor to help you. So we have a module called Demo with two entities. The first one has a name, and the second. Uh, feature of type second entity. And then we have a second entity that only has a name. So it's a very, very simple model. So the first, the first thing we can see is what do we get uh, whenever, we, whenever defining a, an AST in Colasso? Well, in, uh, in Colasso, uh, every node, uh, from every node, we can access to information concerning what, the, what, the, what type of node is this? Uh, what are the properties of the node? Uh, where uh, what what does uh, where does the node the node come from uh, the parent of the node the exact position of the node uh, in the in the text in case of a node that comes from uh, parse three uh, the actual source text and the destination in case of a node that has a subsequent steps of transformations. And then, of course, we have also type-specific information. So, for example, for a module, we can access to the name and then So, if we run this uh, test on the example module,
Okay, so for example, if we consider the demo module, uh, so in the node type would be a module, so the, the SD class we defined, uh, we, are, we, we can inspect the properties of the node. And this is uh, the, 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 um, the interesting part of this is that we just defined a, a Kotlin class. So we are not using some kind of uh, metaformalism to define the properties. So we, we are kind of inspecting the class definition to extract these properties. We can also access uh, to the uh, origin of the nodes. In this case, it's a parse tree origin because we obtained this from we obtained it from an antler node. Uh, the parent is now because it's the root of the model. Uh, the position we can uh, we can say that the this this module starts from line number one, column zero, and ends up in line number nine, column uh, column one. Uh, we can also access to the source text of the node. The destination is not set because we don't have uh, subsequent steps. And then we can access the type specific information. Uh, the same thing is uh, for the first entity, uh, the second entity. So we can we can access all this kind of information. Um, but other than these properties, uh, we can also access. Uh, we can also um, Use different uh, different algorithms to traverse the the AST. So um, the most basic one, the way to uh, navigate the, the the AST is to traverse it uh, by using a depth first approach. So starting from the demo module, for example, we can just use the walk method and uh, walk depth first through all the nodes. So for example, here. Uh, if we execute the walk and for each of them, we just print some stuff to check uh, which node are we visiting. We can clearly see that we start from the module and then we go to the first entity, to the feature of the first entity, and then and then we go to the second entity and all the features. And finally, so we, 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 we finish our navigation with the type node of this, the feature of the second entity. However, we are, sometimes we want to perform different kinds of traversals. So for example, we, we also provide support for uh, performing uh, leads first or uh, post-order visits of, of the AST. Uh, so for example, uh, invoking the walk leads first method, we can, we can see how the navigation uh, can be uh, performed by starting from the leads. So in this case, we're starting from string type. So it's essentially the other way around. And this might this this is uh, this is useful for uh, things like type computation, for example. Mm, analogously, we can we can also walk through the ancestors of a given node. So if we take the first uh, the first feature, so the name feature of the first entity, we can we can uh, walk up through the ancestors. So we can uh, go through the entity and then the module. Uh, similarly, we can go to the children. Uh, specifically, we can, uh, we can uh, walk through the direct children. Uh, in this case, we can just uh, invoke walk children uh, or, also, or also all the descendants, which means essentially everything that's, in this case, we are, we are considering the module so we are going to visit everything that's that's um, that's that's the sending from the module, except for from for the module itself. Uh, and and this uh, this walk children uh, the uh, walking to the descendants can also be um, customized in uh, by providing a different walker. So for example, if we want to go through all the descendants of a node, but we want to start from the leaves, we can customize this kind of uh, navigation uh, depending on our needs. Um, then we can also uh, look for nodes depending on the type. So for example, we can given a node, in this case, the second entity name feature, we can look for the uh, ancestor of type module, the ancestor of type entity. And um, so in this case, for example, we can see that 
we can easily find the module uh, demo, the entity, second entity. And if we look for a type ancestor, the result will be now because there is no type ancestor in this case. Um, we can also aggregate. Uh, well, in the case of a find, we are going to get one node, but we can also uh, aggregate multiple nodes by searching. So if we search for nodes of type uh, module, we are going to find the module demo, which is the only module. Otherwise, we can search for all the entities and the same thing for features and types. Um, so this is a kind of uh, traversal that's, that's useful, uh, especially when um, reasoning and uh, uh, on the type of nodes. So generally in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in the case of transformations, but sometimes, uh, for example, whenever implementing editors that are maybe using the language server protocol, we might need, we might, we might be interested in uh, um, using the position. Of, so for uh, in looking for something uh, based on its position. So in uh, Colasso, we also provide this um, support for uh, looking for stuff, considering the position and the position, uh, it's, it's the one that we get from the, the source text. Uh, the find by position method, for example, um, is going to find the nearest corresponding, the nearest corresponding node uh, to a given position. Um, we can also um, we can also uh, choose to pass the self well the self contained parameter is uh, used to uh, express the fact that if in if in our AST we are sure that all the positions of the children nodes will be contained in those of the parent so in in this example uh, we are going to be self contained we can we can uh, Put it to true and the, and the search will be a bit faster. Otherwise, if we have cases like uh, ASTs that do not have contiguous positions or self-contained positions, like maybe following from the uh, expansion of an import or of uh, some, depending on the language, then we can also uh, look for a specific position without having this assumption. So running this test, for example, um, we can, uh, uh, in this example, I just kind of cheated to to get the position. So what I what I what I defined here is uh, I access the second entity, the type of the first feature of the second entity. So this string type that we can see on the right, and I access the position of that. And and actually, what I got uh, when I when I invoke the find by position method on the module. I actually got back the string type node corresponding to this. So yeah, I just found the the nearest node to the position that I that I gave to the method. And similarly to what we have seen with uh, types, we can also uh, we can do it with uh, the position. So we uh, can find a node by position, but we can also search uh, nodes all nodes contained in a given position. And in this case, the nodes will be ordered with respect to the proximity, their proximity with respect to, uh, to the position that we that uh, we provided to the um, to the method. So in this case, I'm uh, I'm uh, still I'm I'm looking for the uh, second the the position of the second entity, and I'm going to get the uh, the entity, and then uh, maybe the features, all the all the all the nodes that are contained in this position. Okay. Other than navigation, uh, we also provide uh, some support for testing, uh, especially for testing the the equality of ASTs. So, if we, if for example, we want to uh, verify the the output of uh, some transformation or or the construction of RST, we can use the uh, method uh, assert, assert ASTs are equal. Um, and in, and in this, uh, this method, we can also choose to ignore specific fields. So in this example, I am, I have the, I'm, also, I'm always using the demo module on the right. And I want to uh, verify that uh, this module is uh, equal to um, a module with name demo 
and a given list of entities. But when it comes to the first entity, I don't want to compare the features. So I'm just going to ignore the, the children. And, and this method is just going, going to compare the ASTs. In this, in this example, it's just going to pass. If we change the name, the first entity for some reason, it's going to, it's going to fail. Uh, Essentially, it's going to inform me that there is a node uh, that's not that's not uh, corresponding, and the and the the actual the actual value that we got and the expected value. So this this is utility method is just going uh, to compare uh, node by node the ASTs. Well, we can do a similar thing for uh, parsing uh, results. Uh, what is a parsing result? Is a class that we provide in Colasu. It is essentially um, a decorated AST. So we have the AST and also the possible, the, the list of issues that we might have with this AST and then uh, the code and some other information. We, get, we can decorate it with the uh, time that we, with some time information if we are um, uh, evaluating the, the, the performance, for example. And uh, in this case, we can use the, um, assert parsing results are equal. So for example, um, in this case, I'm, I'm using a different module, a simple example module, and I, I forgot to uh, close the, the curly brackets. Um, so my, I'm expecting to get back some errors from the parsing um, activity. Uh, so I can list the issues, so I'm expecting to have extraneous input so uh, and uh, the the fact that the curly brace uh, braces uh, is not closed and yeah the test passes so so this allows us to not only compare the asts but also have unit testing support for uh, issues and errors uh, so the the error support in the in the parser um, yeah, this is another example of a, a semantic issue. Uh, in this case, I'm um, I, I, we have a module with an entity and a reference to a not existing entity. Uh, so if we remember in the uh, symbol resolver, uh, whenever we are trying to resolve a, an entity, but we uh, happen not to resolve it, we, we just had a semantic error. So in this test, we are expecting to have this entity not existing, not found, uh, and that has uh, passes. Uh, if we, yes, we can, we can also uh, provide the position, and, but still we, we can also access the AST. So uh, we, well, not, not all the times, but most of the times we, we, we are going to produce the issues and also that part of the AST that it has been possible to, to parse. So uh, finally, we can also um, export uh, both the meta model, uh, I mean, the AST definition as a, as a meta model and the AST uh, instances as models. In this, uh, in, the, in order to do this, we uh, need to make Colasu uh, aware of uh, what do we want to include in our meta model. And in order to do this, we define a, a meta model builder uh, where essentially we just need to um, communicate the package name, the uh, namespace URI, namespace prefix, and the meta classes that uh, are going to be included in the meta model. In this case, it has pretty small meta model. So we just uh, essentially uh, enumerate, uh, we just list all the, all the ASD uh, type and node types that we, that we have. Um, so if we execute this test, we can see in the resources folder, that I meet an ECOR, uh, an EMF JSON meta model. As, well, it's an ECOR meta model has been uh, generated. We have the uh, entity package with a feature meta class entity. And we can also uh, export 
a, a model. For example, if we have this example module with an entity and a name, uh, we can see that uh, it's correctly exported and yes, using uh, using our uh, using our module meta model. Other than uh, eCore, we also have a native format, native JSON format, and this is the one that we we use um, at least for the moment. That uh, the one that we use to um, make different components in a pipeline interact. Um, so, for example, if we run the uh, the serialization, we can we can see that the format is slightly different. The main difference with respect to the eCore um, model is that we also we we have the uh, information about the position and uh, we treat references a bit differently. If, um, for example, if we consider um, here, so here we have a um, we we are using the same old module. So this, uh, so if if we look in, uh, to how this second entity reference is uh, represented, we can see that uh, we are not. Directly using the directly reference, um, putting the the entity reference, but we are indexing the all the different uh, nodes in our in our model. Um, so, for example, yeah, this is the sec the definition of the second entity. We have a ID field uh, with value zero, and this is the way we are going to refer. So here, the the um, we have an entity ref type uh, where that has type uh, target a second entity. So this is the name, and the referred is a number. So this is a native format that we've been working with. And it can be used as an alternative to eCore. Okay. So essentially, this this is what what can be done with Colasso. Um, so if um, I I also prepared this is so we have the parser for our entity language, um, and I prepared a um, Python code generator implemented using Colasso. Uh, very briefly, uh, the AST is taken from the uh, AST definition that uh, I provide in the SDL format. So um, it's a pretty standard one. We, we can have modules, expressions, and functions, and everything. And uh, we have a code generator for this. So let's suppose that this is a code generator. It's been implemented as a pipeline uh, or uh, using any other method. And it, it works on a Colasso ASTs. Well, then. If we want to um, create a transpiler from, uh, we, we have our entity parser and our Python code generator, we can just compose um, our, uh, our components to, to have the transpiler. So in this case, uh, we have an example of a, um, a, an entity to Python transpiler that just um, is going to um, parse the, the entity code uh, uh, using the parser. And then uh, transform the entity AST to the Python AST. There is some uh, utility uh, transformations for uh, imports, and then uh, use the code generator to finally generate code. So essentially, uh, in this case, uh, in order to implement the transpiler, we just we just need to to express how the entity AST is mapped to the Python AST. Well, in this case, since the entity language is simple, we, we don't need to handle expressions and, and uh, other behavioral uh, language, uh, language uh, features. We, we just have to um, express what a module consists in Python, what an entity is, and we chose to map uh, entity modules to Python modules, uh, entities to class definitions, and finally features to class properties with a default value equal to none. We are um, let's we are using the field um, method from the data classes package. 
And uh, we are also mapping the type. So a string type is going to be a, str uh, in, a string in Python, a Boolean, and so on. And uh, entity references will just be um, uh, identifiers, uh, so references in the Python language. Uh, I, we also added the, an additional step of um, to, 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 to just have uh, imports added. So whenever we get the Python AST, we go through the AST and we look for um, we look for um, the we, we just add the um, imports like few from the future we want to import annotations and if if there is any name, any identifier that's called field. So if the field identifier has been used, we want to import it from data classes. So if, um, for example, if we take this school module where we have a uh, professor and a course with uh, different features, we can run the transpiler and we're going to obtain a set of classes in Python uh, with uh, different features mapped as uh, fields. So uh, this uh, this example was to show how easy it is to um, uh, compose different uh, different uh, components uh, once implemented in Colasso and not in this demo, but in general the uh, the difference uh, in case the different the, the, the components are implemented in different languages is that, Rather than integrating this, uh, let's see, at runtime, we, we might just need to add the uh, serialization and unserialization step. So, yeah, that's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you, Lorenzo. So, uh, at this point, time I'm going to stop the recording and so uh, we will start with the question for people watching the recording after that this time if you want to ask questions come to the live presentation <laughs>